boys and girls, and I'm not going to say children of all ages, because when you get to a certain age, children stop being children and start being little pricks. This is the Insane Asylum Group Therapy. We're doing it again. Shit's about to get real, and I mean real, real. We're going to talk current events, and again, I am not on the line by myself. I'm not going crazy again, and it feels good. First and foremost, he's back for like the umpteenth time. Ryan, what's up, man? I don't always drink beer, but when I do... I'm usually drunk after about three or four, and I act like an idiot. You sound like somebody else I know who's a lightweight. It's all right, though. That's perfectly fine. It's, I had to get that out. <laughs> <laughs> and next on the line, he is the youngest like wrestling encyclopedia that I know of. And he's made it very clear that he is going to become an Army Ranger when he finally does uh, enlist into the military. Vinny, what's up, dude? What's up, guys? All right, folks, so tonight... We are talking current events, and this is shit that's going on not just around the world, but in our lives as well. So um, let's let's start off with that. Let's talk about ourselves a little bit first. What's going on in the lives of Vinny, Ryan, and myself? Let's start off with you, Vinny. What's going on in your life? Give us a little something, something. Um, school. Okay, that happens to a lot of people. Lots of running. Good, finally. And video games. Well, that's always a plus. Yes. Yes, that is always good. Anything else you want to throw in there? Baseball. 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 Okay. Season starts in less than a week. And I'm pretty sure Vinny is just psyched for it. A little Where's bit. Your team, Vinny? Yankees. Oh, never mind. They're <laughs> sucking this <laughs> spring, I know. See, see, I'm not the only person. <laughs> Look, I give credit what credit is due. The Yankees, they are a legacy team. But that's what the problem is. They are a legacy team. They've got like 30-some-odd championships. Okay, we get it. You're good. Stop. Hey, they're the second oldest team right now in baseball, okay? Yeah, their, their average player is 28 years old. Don't give a fuck. <laughs> oh, I thought you meant, like, the actual length of the Oh no. The club. No, no, look, don't give a fuck. Don't give a shit. They are a legacy. They're just, to me, they are the same as, you know, the Dallas Cowboys. They're the same as, as uh, I guess you can say, New England Patriots from time to time, depending on how you look at it. But they're a legacy team. Whoopie fucking shit. You won so many championships. We get it. You're the best in the business. Shut the fuck up already. Let Take a, take a season off. Back yourself out. Give the Cubbies a chance to win. For fuck's sake. Yeah, right. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, 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 in the, I'm a Phillies fan, and I, uh, I feel I for the Cubbies. Legacy. So. Well, well, the Phillies, the Phillies are nowhere near the leg- same legacy as the Yankees. The Yankees have won... I think it's 26 championships, 27, 27 now, compared to the Philadelphia Phillies, two. And the Philadelphia Phillies are the oldest team in all of baseball, so. Okay, well, right, well yeah, okay, so I guess I can retract that statement and say they're not a legacy team. But they definitely have a lot of steam going behind them. But then again, if you look at it, a lot of Philadelphia teams, they really have a lot of steam behind them. They really do. Well, in Philadelphia, those are fucking team homes. Yeah, they love. They really like love their teams, and especially Philadelphia. Philadelphia fans are so passionate. We're so passionate. We love our team so much that if we feel they're not giving 110 percent, we hate them. Yeah, and then they're like, "Oh shit! Why do they hate us so much? Because of the fact that we suck at this point." Yeah, but I guess we better fix our shit, huh? Yeah, yeah, fix that. Um, crazy. I know it, but yeah, I mean, I'm not. A, I've never been a fan of legacy teams. Me, like when it comes to like teams. I'm not a real big baseball fan. I used to be a big fan of the Dodgers because my grandfather was a fan of the Dodgers. That's a legacy team, I think. Yeah, but, I agree. But the thing is, I I stopped liking baseball. So uh, to me, I don't have a real I don't have a baseball team. Um, when it comes to football, I'm a Green Bay Packers fan. I mean, I couldn't call them a legacy team because I think they've only got two championships under their belt or three. Um, and when it comes to like, when it comes to hockey, ah, uh, oh, you know my dad will. <laughs> yeah, your, dad, your dad's a Rangers fan for life, without a doubt. Whew. But for a while, I was a big L.A. Kings fan. So, Why? Uh, but, you know, over time, you know, Jersey Devils, and then fucking, you know, the Flyers, and then the Rangers. But it, ultimately, I, I think I'll stick to my, my core, and I'll stick with a, a Kings fan. Um, although I loved, I loved Gretzky when he was on the Rangers. He was fucking awesome. Um, I think Messier's better. Everyone thinks Messier is better, but technically he's kind of proven it. Yeah. I mean, statistics. Well, you're Vinny, you're talking from a, a very much a New York bias. Messier <laughs> is the captain. 
Messier is the guy who, in Game 6 against the Devils in the 1994 Eastern Conference Finals, he said, we will win, and he scored a hat trick. That man has cemented himself in New York hockey lore, and he was there for a large portion of his career. Gretzky went there for, like, what, one, two years to, to end his career? You know, there's just there's no comparison when it comes from, you know, New York. You have the captain, and then you have Gretzky, who uh, across his entire career, you know, is better than any player that we may ever see in the National Hockey League. But to New York fans, they, he just doesn't have that place in their heart like Mess does. You know, Messi. I mean, I'm a New Jersey Devils fan. I was 10 years old when the Rangers beat the Devils in that Eastern Conference Finals. I didn't forgive Stefan Matteau for years. Well, ironically, his son now plays for the Devils, but... I still had tons of respect for Messier because of the integrity, the class, and the skill that he brought to you know the National Hockey League. So I can still respect him. He's a Derek Eater of NHL. Well, yeah, he was. That's a good way to put it. That's a damn good way to put it. But um, I, I mean, now we're we're totally off, totally off tangent. But that's we're gonna need a six-hour episode. Yes. Well, we are. Thank you for making fun of all my sports teams in the intro. So. Jenny, I say it because I love you. I know. <laughs> anyway, Ryan, what's going on in your life? Oh, man, uh, I'm just going to give you some brief snippets. Uh, I actually talked, Will, with you about this a couple of days ago, how I discovered that Iron Maiden is, like, the most amazing band ever. Yes. Well, now, let me let me clarify this. I have always liked Iron Maiden. But the thing is, is, like, you know, I'll hear, like, you know, Run to the Hills and, um, you know, Two Minutes to Midnight or Number of the Beast. And I'm like, yeah, these are all cool songs. And then one day I'm listening to Pandora, and it keeps playing Iron Maiden songs. And, you know, this song comes on, Ace is High. Oh, this song is awesome. Mm -hmm. And then Fear of the Dark comes on. It's like, oh, this song is awesome. And then Tail Gunner comes on. And I'm like, oh, this song is awesome. And then Hallowed Be Nine Name comes on. I'm like, man, this is awesome. Next thing I know, I've listened to about ten Iron Maiden songs, and I'm like, these are all amazing. And for the record, if anyone ever asks me what metal is, you play them Hallowed Be Thy Name because that is the most metal song ever. That song defines metal. That so song that's is fucking amazing. That, that, that song, that, that's part of my life right there. Uh, I've also recently had the random – so am I the only person – so far I'm the only person who gets this. Am I the only person who randomly gets urges to play games I, like, haven't played in years? I do all the time. Ask like, well, how many times I ask them to take me to the store and get a PS2 game. Yeah. Like, <laughs> randomly, like, like per, point in case – Case in point, whatever. My girlfriend gets mail when I do that. Last year, I wanted to play Pokemon. I don't know why. I haven't touched Pokemon since I was a freshman in high school, but I wanted to play it. This year, I don't know why I want to play the classic Doom games. I don't know why. I just do. I want to go back and beat the classic Doom games. So there's that. Um, I also really want to play Bioshock Infinite, which just came out. Yep. And I, all the reviews say that it is an absolute classic, just like the first game. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I'm also psyched that the United States, Los Estados Unidos, United States men's national soccer team, won a big game at home against Costa Rica in a blizzard and then went down to Estadio Azteca in Mexico in front of over 100,000 Mexican angry fans <gasps> and secured one point. They tied them. Nice. Which is something they've only ever done once in like seventy some years. So that's kind of what's going on with me right now. That's some of the stuff that I'm kind of excited about. So you're so you're definitely getting psyched up for the World Cup. Uh, yes. I mean, I wasn't at first because the United States, right now they're in the last round of qualifying, and basically how it works is there's six teams, <clears throat> and everyone plays each other twice, once at home and once on the road. Right. So a total of ten games. The top three teams automatically make it to the World Cup. The fourth place team has to play another team from another part of the world. I think in this case it's uh, New Zealand. To and the winner of that goes to the World Cup. The United States lost their first game, and they looked like crap. I wasn't excited at all. I thought they weren't going to qualify. You know, there was all this talk that Jurgen Klinsmann, who's the coach, didn't know what he was doing, and that the players were restless. Well, they took all that drama and they took all that you know sideshow business, and they went out and they got four out of possible six points. And which was amazing considering, you know, everything that came into it and the fact that one of those two games was down in Estadio Azteca where the United States, let alone the United States, no one does well. So, you know, that was pretty awesome. Yeah, I, I am an absolute fanatic when it comes to the World Cup. I try to watch every game. I am a diehard 
U.S. soccer fan, one of the most amazing experiences of my life was actually when I went to United States soccer game. They played Panama down in Philadelphia during the uh, Gold Cup back in, I think it was 2009. Oh, man, that was amazing. Just an amazing experience. The energy, it's just there, there's nothing like an international soccer match. Awesome. Awesome. I, I still want to go see an international soccer match. I haven't seen one yet. Um, I just want to get that feel, that, that energy that flows through the, the entire crowd during one of their games. I really want to go to that. Dang it. <clears throat> Shut up. Sorry, Orioles just hit a home run. Oh, you weren't. Are you serious Dude. right now? Dude, <laughs> it's, it's still spring training. Who cares? Oh, who cares? No, who cares? No, who cares? Wait until the season starts. Anyway, um, going on in my life, I work. Um, then I come home. Um, what? I just now here's the thing. I just got onto this crazy MMO kick, hardcore. Right now, uh, if I look at my my desktop, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It looks like eleven games that I have. Yeah, eleven games that I've recently downloaded, and I just started playing. I I hate to admit it. I am a Star Wars fan, but I hate to admit it. I just started playing Knights of, or Star Wars: The Old Republic. Here's the thing. A lot of people said, a lot of game critics were like, critics were like you know, if, if you're looking to play an, an epic MMO, this really isn't the game. But if you were looking for a Knights of the Old Republic 3, this is it. I agree with them. Uh, I just recently started playing. The limitations on this game blow. EA Bioware needs to really take the stick out of their ass and just go ahead and make this game full-on free-to-play. Not, you know, free-to-play slash sub. And, and and just let it go. Let it just fucking jump up. It can get another two million fucking players if they just let this shit go. You know, it's really well done. It really does give you that feel of the Knights of the Old Republic series. Um, really cool. You know, I'm playing as a Jedi Knight, first character I've ever made on this game, and it's fun. It's a compelling story. I'm interested in it, but it, there's a lot of fucking restrictions. But it's still, you know, it gives me that Star Wars fix that I've been needing. Um. Other than that, I've been raging a lot. I have got – I don't know if anybody's been following me on Facebook.com yep. forward slash Wilfredo Rivera. <clears throat> cheap plug. Um, I've been putting out posts lately, you know, who wants to fight? I am just so – mind you, I just started working again starting since uh, February 22nd was my first day at my new job. I can't say the name of the job because, you know, there's a whole, you know, social media agreement thing, blah, blah, blah. But I can say this. Ever since I started working there, I fucking hate the job. I hey, hate the job. Wait, wait, Will. What? Isn't there a certain way to get around it? Yeah, by not saying the name. Or. 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 What's or? It's you know spelled, where I'm... It spells tram law backwards. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But here's, here's the thing, though. I hate my job. I really do. And it's not because the job sucks. The job does not suck. The job is actually, it's what I expect it to be. It's the people there. Great Jesus on fucking crackers on, and, and cake lit on fire. These people are fucking... It, it's not even the people I directly work with, particularly. It's my management crew, and they just can't get shit right. They, head and ass are not wired together. And it makes me want to bitch slap the shit out of somebody, but I can't because then I'll get fired. I can't have that right now. Damn it. So I am currently looking for more gainful employment somewhere else because i got to get the hell out of this. I, I've come to officially say this. Retail is not for me anymore, because I am no longer really a people person, because people piss me off, because there are a lot of stupid fucking people out here, but that's just my opinion on that. I mean, that's... Voice, voice over jobs. Dude, I so want to do voice over jobs. Dude, I would love that too, man. I've been thinking of the, what a lot of people don't realize, there's a lot of work that goes into that, like a lot of work. I, think, voiceovers. I don't care. I, I, if somebody told me I had to spend 26 hours of my day just working on getting this one particular annotation in my voice, I would do it just so I knew I could do it. You know, I would love to. I would love to be a, a voice to any particular cartoon. It doesn't really matter what cartoon, actually. It, it's just I would love game. to be a voice, a video game, cartoon, uh, animated short. Don't give a shit. Hell, even if I'm just doing voiceover work for like a documentary, Disney don't movie. care. I, as much as I hate Disney, yes, I'd do it for Disney too. <laughs> I hate Disney, damn it. Well, All right. I'm going to give you a character. You give me a voice. Pizzle Sticks, the Confused Pirate. Pizzle Sticks, the Confused Pirate. Yeah. Okay. 
Let me see if I can come up with something. So, boys, boys and girls, let me ask you a question. Am I on the boat or is the boat on me? Not bad, not bad. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> I mean, uh, just the other day I was sitting there thinking, I was like, uh, I need to get a compressor mic or a condenser mic so I can start working on, like, a, a voice reel. Where I just go, I basically talk in different accents, or accents, and I say, "Hey, you know, I'm, I'm going around the world." So I, you know, hit Europe and hit Asia and all these other places. Like, "Hey, hey how you doing? Welcome to Mexico." Although I sound pretty stereotypical, I don't think anybody's gonna give a fuck, you know. <laughs> and and I was like, oh, "I should really do this," but then I don't have the money to get that fucking compressor mic. So I'm like, "Ah, eh, fuck it." So I'll wait for another time to do it. But we've gotten completely off track, kind of. Not really. We kind of say it because we're talking current events within ourselves. But let's talk current events that are going on around the world, and I want to hit the hot button topic right now. Well, one of the many hot button topics: uh, North Korea. This is the big thing that's going on in this world Ugh. at this moment. And yes, there are a lot of people who are like, "Bomb the fuck out of North Korea," and then there's this group of people who are like, eh, "Maybe we should just leave them to their devices." Um, let's let's first talk. Let's first get to like the root of this issue. I throw this question out to you guys. Do you really think that North Korea's issue isn't the people, but it's the person running the show? Yes. Oh, absolutely. It's the person running the show. The person running the show is everything. The people are – in that country, they are fed propaganda and a certain mentality, and you have to live that way. And anything that's said against O oh, grand leader is punishable by death. You know, I love war, and uh, he's a 28-year-old trying to prove a point, and the point is that he's bigger than the United States, which is just going to wind up being a fail. Okay, well, see, I was, that was going to be my next question. Do you think that because Kim Jong-un, being the current leader of North Korea, do you think because his father, Kim Jong-il, and his grandfather before him, do you think they kind of implemented this mentality of, the Americas are terrible. You know, they are just, they are, you know, greedy, filthy, nasty, disgusting people who have no sense of moral ethics or anything like that. Do you think by feeding that down, wouldn't you expect at some point for rebellion to kick up? Well, that's actually a viewpoint that's not uncommon in a lot of places in the world. Uh, but with North Korea specifically, I think what it is, is it's a lot of. Um, Kim Jong Un kind of trying to establish himself and his regime uh, because you know his grandfather was iron fisted, his father was iron fisted, and in a country like that, and the way it's run, it's all about having a tight grip and tight control at the top. I mean, there is an absolute iron wall between North Korea and the rest of the world, and the government keeps it that way. They don't want anyone corrupting their little kingdom that they have. And I think one of the main things behind Kim Jong-un doing all this is he's trying to say, hey, listen, I'm the big dog now. We're making some nuclear weapons over here. You know, I'm going to prove to my people and the rest of the world that, you know, Kim Jong-un ain't nothing to fuck with. And, you know, I'm just going to lay the smack down verbally here. Now, they're making a lot of threats. You know, that they're going to nuke the U.S. They're going to nuke our bases in Japan. They're going to nuke Guam. They're going to you know, destroy South Korea and this and that. I think that, when it comes down to it, is all bluster because I don't think North Korea, even though they're crazy, I don't think they're stupid enough to do that without having some sort of leverage. Okay. Vinny, what are your thoughts? It's suicide. Well, that was <laughs> it. Is. That's all it is. <laughs> it's, it's, it's suicide. It's a mass suicide. He's going to cause genocide on his own people. Okay, now what, explain why you feel that way. He's a little young guy trying to prove a point, just like his father was trying to prove a point. But see, his father was smart enough not to do anything, and he's not. Okay, so, so basically you're saying this is youth over experience. Yep. Okay, well, think about it. Well, it, from, my, from my standpoint, here's the thing. Yes, he is trying to prove a point, not just to his people, but also to himself, that he can be a leader. But... Under the, given the circumstances that have been thrown into the situation, his biggest supporter, which harbors 98% of the American debt, China, is backing away from him. Mind you, North Korea, it's been said, 
that, you know, there are people in North Korea who are literally killing their children to feed themselves. You know, uh, the poverty there is ridiculous. You thought it was bad here in the States. It's almost become a third world country there. With the amount of poverty and disease and plagues and, and things of that nature going on, it's starting to become more and more uh, like it, it's no longer really starting to become a country where people are starting to believe that this is going to flourish. People are losing faith there. And I think for this young guy who's 28 years old trying to, sit, trying to literally step into his father's shoes, into his grandfather's shoes, into this major legacy of – you know, we are North Korea. We are, you know, we're going to become unstoppable because I'm the young kid. I'm the, I'm the new kid on the block. I've got fresh ideas. I don't think he realizes that these ideas have been tried many times before, many for centuries before he's even been ex- a, a glint in his daddy's nutsack. You know, many people have tried these tactics before, and a lot of times they have failed. And at the point, if you think about it, you know, the United States says that the U.N. actually was like, look, don't do this whole nuclear testing thing. And they said, well, if you won't allow us to do our own nuclear testing, we're going we're gonna to stop using – we're going to stop holding to the – I believe it was 1950s armistice saying that there's a, like a ceasefire between North and South Korea. Okay, so where are you going to test that, that nuclear rocket? Well, we're going to test it on South Korea because we can go back to war with them technically. But this has been the longest war that's been going on since like the Hundred Years War. Maybe – somebody talking off the ledge here. Maybe some way, some shape, some form, we can send somebody, a true diplomat, over to North Korea and kind of talk Kim Jong-un down from this. Is this possible? Yeah, Dennis Rodman. Uh, yeah. I oh, yeah. He's he's a, they, they became but good I, friends. But here's the thing. You guys are taking his threats at face value. He is not going to pull the trigger. He's not going to do anything, and here's why. He's simply doing this to establish himself. Everything he said, he's not going to do. Why? Vinny said it. It's suicide. He pushes a button. He blows up Alaska or something or whatever their longest-range missile can reach. He blows up some base in, in Japan, and you know what happens? China goes, hey, buddy, we've been backing you for a long time. But we don't want a war with somebody who, who owes us billions of dollars. Uh, you're on your own. We told you not to shoot your body, but you had to fire the missile. As soon as that missile is fired, if it is nuclear, as soon as that missile is fired, w- one missile from North Korea, that entire country bo- within the hour is wiped off the map. Like, we just nuke the piss out of them, and that is the end of that. Like, the United States is basically saying, go ahead, go ahead, give us a reason, you know. We're even now we're putting you know missile defenses along extra missile defenses along the specific uh, the specific coast. Yeah, listen to me, the <laughs> Pacific coast. You know because you know we don't know North Korea has usually never been this belligerent with their threats. You know they've usually said things, but now they're making videos about blowing up the White House and saying that they're gonna directly blow up our bases in the Pacific. I think it's all bluster, and I don't think that they're stupid enough to do it. Uh, like I said before, they need leverage. They need some sort of situation in which the only re- way I can actually see them doing anything and getting away with it is if basically China goes, hey, listen, we're back in North Korea. Oh, what? North Korea just slapped you. You're going to mess with our boy? Oh, we're going to get in this. You know, like how those stupid street fights start, like when some guy fucks with you and you tell him to stop it and then his friends are going to kick your ass because you're fucking with him even though you're not. It's really dumb. That would be the only way I could see North Korea actually – really doing anything stupid because otherwise they're just going to get exploded hey guys i just sent a link in the skype chat of containing north korea and it was released today and check it out oh, God. and i want to make one more comment about north korea i hope come 2016 i'm getting deployed over there yeah, i really think that that i really think that that's our next war you know what? I, I, I couldn't argue with you any more about that. That is – that really is. And honestly, I think that's a catalyst to World War III in my opinion. I no. think and, – and here's the reason why. But just hold, hold, hold that thought for a second. This would be the, one of the hardest-fought wars we're going to have because of the fact that our resources are already so thinned out now. I mean we've got troops all over the world at this point, and this is a direct – this right here, if you think about it, is probably the most immediate threat at this point. 
because they're not too far off our, our Pacific coast. Now, the thing is, they, they've already talked about this. A lot of military strategists and things like that, they've talked about this. If this was to go down, it would happen on the North Korean shores. My guys would win. We're not talking specifically Army Rangers, genius, because hey. it takes more than just a couple of Army Rangers. It takes a large, a large force to stop a country. Don't, I'm not saying that they're not going to do their part. But we don't, we don't even have to send people over there. Just send a couple of drones, right. and then See, that's boom, the boom. But we already do have people over there. Do you know how many troops we have stationed in South Korea? It, like, isn't it like 50,000? 50, yeah, 30-something thousand. Now, oh. that's just, that right there is just a small force to take over a massive country. 50,000 of our troops to try to occupy and take over that particular country just to quell this war, that's a little, that's a little bit on the lean side. But I think that if this, they said, they said it before, if this war does go down, it goes down on their soil. That's fine. They are a peninsula country. We kind of have the advantage because we have a greater navy. Not to mention, we've got a lot of people backing us. I mean, hell, the entire UN was like, look, you want to do this whole you know, nuclear testing thing? We're all against it. You're the only one who's bitching and moaning about letting it happen. Even your boys from up north in China were like, yo, dog, shut the fuck up and sit the fuck down. <laughs> If you think about it, Korea really is China's – North Korea is really China's drunk friend who's doing stupid shit. Yeah, very much. It's it's not even like a drunk friend. It's more like a drunk little brother. Yeah, you it's know? a drunk it's, little brother who got who got power hungry and was just like, fuck it. I'm, I'm just going to start a fight with the biggest guy in the room. But China really is the crux of this whole thing. China is the main reason why this hasn't been dealt with yet and why we haven't invaded them is because we do not want to piss off China. I will say this right now. If the United States is to go to war with China, there is a very real possibility that the United States may not exist for much longer. Because if there is one country on this planet I do not want to tangle with, it is China. China has the money. China has the resources, and China has the manpower to do it. You, you will hear no argument. I, I totally agree. I think that's the only true nation on this planet at this point. Actually, for, for quite some time, for at least the past 200 years, that has been a very viable threat to any other nation. Well, I wouldn't go back 200 years. I mean, the Japanese like just absolutely smashed them in World War II. Right. It's just the fact that they've kind of, I mean, they've been kept to themselves. They've gone to a, uh, um, a you know, communist nation, and they have amassed all this just, you know, they, I mean, obviously they have got, you know, what, over a billion, two billion people or whatever it is. They've got one point, I believe they, it's 1.2 billion people in that country alone. And then they've got they've got the uh, they've got all of our money. We owe them all the money. Everything that's produced comes from there. I mean, it's 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 kind of a scary scenario. And like I, I like if we were to go to war with North Korea, the only thing that if we go to war with North Korea, the key is China. If we're just fighting North Korea. North Korea is going to bust out some weapons. They're going to be hard to take over. They do have one of the biggest standing armies in the world, North Korea. But, you know, it, it wouldn't be like Iraq, where Iraq was like, hey, let's drive the A-1 Abrams right down to Baghdad. You know, it's not going to be like that. Uh, war with North Korea would be much more drawn out uh, and much more scary uh, because they, would, they, they don't even treat their own people with respect. So that would be a situation where it would be a very fierce fight. Um the real worry to me is if China gets involved. If China gets involved, the war will not stay in Asia anymore. It will come to our shores. Oh, absolutely. Um, I, I think that would that's the, that would be the tactically smart maneuver on Asia's part to bring that war here uh, because we're not – one of the things that we definitely do not have in this country is that we don't necessarily enforce physical education as much as we should in china it is law that every child that goes to school and it is law that every child must go to school like it is here that they learn traditional martial arts they're already being pre-trained for military action and it is also law in china if i'm correct you have to serve at least three years in their formal military so everybody in china has served when they turn 18, they have officially started serving for their country. We don't have that here. It's not mandatory. It's not law. It's, it's an option. I think it should be. Well, here's the thing, and let me just kind of point this out, is 
it's very similar, very similar to what happened, started happening towards the latter parts in the decline of the Roman Empire. Roman, Roman males stopped signing up for, you know, the legions. They stopped joining the army, and then they had their conscripts from foreign nations, a lot like what you see now. You see a lot of immigrants and poor people that are put in the army, you know, Latino, black, um, you know, what have you. They have become the majority of what's on the front line these days. So I kind of see that parallel, and it's kind of worrisome, you know. No, I agree, and and I think that's something that, as as Americans, it's something that we should look at and say, you know, we we under I understand. Yes, there's an option to choose, and I think by giving people the option to choose if they're going to serve or not, does kind of make for a better soldier because somebody who wants to do it, who's like I'm gung ho, like Vinny. Vinny wants to become an Army Ranger. He's gung ho for the task. He's got his mind set for that. Then you take someone like me. I wouldn't mind helping out, but the problem is it's not something that I necessarily want to do. So if they were to force me into the military, I would feel as though I'm forced into this. I kind of don't have much of a choice, but I'm not going to put my 100% into it. And yeah, chances are I wouldn't come back home. But at the same time, it's like I'm kind of – this isn't what I kind of had my mind set for. I could use it as a, uh, as a springboard to something else that I wanted to do, but I don't think it would necessarily be you know, beneficial for someone like me. Versus somebody who is dead set, who says, I want to be a part of the military. Versus someone says, I have to be a part of the military because I have no choice. Hey, guys. I, guess, I, I, have, I have a question. Hold that you, question. Hold that question for the second part. We're gonna, we're, it's, uh, if you're paying attention, if you've been involved, enthralled by this conversation, you, know, you want to hit that like, subscribe button, uh, you know, favorite if you really like it, ultimately share. But we got a second part, so... Uh, Click that annotation that's like right there where my stomach is on the picture, because you can probably see that picture right now. Click that annotation. We're gonna go over to part two. I'm gonna do. Vinny, hold that thought. Okay. Okay. You can't hold it. Hold it. I can't hold it. Hold it. Uh. Ew, somebody <laughs> went poo poo. That was right. Will. No, it wasn't me. <laughs> we'll be right back. Just click on that annotation. We'll be on part two.